If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to 1 Peter. Father, we ask right now that you would come, that you would open our ears and our eyes to prepare our hearts to receive what you would give us today, Father. We ask, Lord God, that we would see the truth of your word, <coughs> that we would allow you to affect our lives in whatever way you would choose. Father, that it would become more of you and less of me. Guide us and guard us, Father, in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. Peter writes, he says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. couple of weeks I've been confronted <coughs> with the same idea being presented. It, it seems like uh, I listen to a podcast and the idea comes out. I read uh, some writings and, and the idea comes out and, uh, I, you know, it seems like wherever I turn, this idea is just being presented to me over and over and over again. And I, I've been uh, struggling how to convey to you what God is, is trying to do, what God is trying to show me. And um, so I'm going to lay this before you today. And I am just asking that you would hear, that you would ponder, that you would allow God to speak to you however he would. Because what I have to say is not easy. Um, Wednesday at prayer meeting, we were going over the number of things in this church that people are facing. From broken homes, to dealing with cancer, to struggles financially. And as we were praying, it became very obvious to me that this body is under attack. And as you know, you think, duh. Look at everything that's going on around you. And, and I've got to tell you, the last two or three weeks, I, I've been almost overwhelmed with the things that are going on with different members of this body. And it seems like no sooner do I hang up the phone from talking with one person than something else comes in. And on Wednesday, I, I talked to the group that was here for prayer, and I said, you know, we're under attack, and we've got to armor up, <coughs> and we've got to stand together in this fight. 
And yet I think there is even more deadly an enemy than cancer. Even a more deadly enemy than division and, and hurt in relationship. See, the, the church is at a crisis. We're at a place where we're the walking dead. We're at a place where we've come to the cross and we've pulled up short. We have asked God for his blessings and rejected the suffering that would discipline us to make us Christ-like. We have chosen to be titillated, soothed, entertained. There are people in this body that if they died today would go to hell. There are people in your families, in my family, that if they died today they would go to hell. And for all that I see around me, in my life, in my family, in this church, we don't give a good goddamn. Because it's troubling to tell someone where they're going. Oh, that's heavy. They don't want to hear that. It's tough to get down on your knees and pray every day and not see things happening. It's hard to look at what's going on and know that you have no power in and of yourself to do anything to fix it. And the TV is so entertaining. And the politics is so entertaining. And the sports are so entertaining. And we have become weak and anemic and pathetic as warriors in this ongoing struggle of the spirit. We are not hungry for God. We are not thirsty for the things of God. We are fat and we are content and complacent. God will not share you with anyone. When you come to him, you come via the cross. And it's a one-for-one -one exchange. His life for yours. He holds nothing back. <coughs> you hold nothing back. We have accepted accord with this world. We have made friends with the God of this world. We have been seduced by the lie that more is better. We have been seduced by this American idealism. Busy, 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 busy. We rush from one thing to another. Our lives are guided and guarded by time. And our time with God grows less and less and more and more hurried. Where are the people who will turn off the TV and get on their knees and plead and intercede on behalf of the people for God? Where are the people who will intercede for the warriors over in the Middle East that are giving up their lives so that His name would be professed? Don't be content with giving Him your dollar. Give him your life. <laughs> he wants all of it. He deserves all of it. He is calling out for all of it. And we so carefully dole out what we are willing to give. <laughs> God, I'm here so long as you don't mess up my plans. So long as you don't 
Take away my things, my idols. Christ did not go to the cross for that kind of relationship. He went so that we would have unimpeded access to the Almighty. And here we are given this great gift, greatest gift ever given, and we treat it disdainfully and shamefully. We say, God, I will allow you on Sunday. I give you my Sunday morning, oh, three, four times a month, unless I got other plans. God, I'll give you my 15 minutes of devotion in the morning, so long as I'm not too tired. God, my prayer life is gimme, 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 gimme. And when we've re re reduced him to a genie in a bottle, the Almighty God, who moved heaven and earth, completely changed the entire dynamic of our lives and our eternities. And we put him last on the list of our priorities. And I know if I asked you guys, I know every one of you would put God down as one of your top priorities. I know that's where I would put him. But how do we live? How do our lives reflect that He is our number one undisputed priority? See, we're in the battle, folks. We're in the battle. Anybody remember Pearl Harbor? Why was Pearl Harbor so devastating? Not prepared. We were unprepared. <coughs> we were not ready. And folks, Pearl Harbor is coming. <coughs> the enemy is moving. The end is drawing near. And it's time to decide, am I in the boat or am I out of the boat? But nobody gets to hang on the side. God doesn't allow that. It's time to choose, am I going to be hot? And if I'm going to be hot, I want to be a blazing inferno. Or am I going to be cold? Because if you continue in lukewarmness, he will reject you. If you continue to choose to live your life with mediocrity, compromising your walk and your relationship with God and all that that entails, Pearl Harbor's coming. I honestly believe there are so many things going on in this body because people are daring to call out to God. <laughs> but as devastating as some of these issues are, and I know from talking with you guys, you have some devastating things going on in your life. By far, far, far worse is complacency. being satisfied with the status quo. When we come to the cross, that's the start. And God calls us to be as He is. Jesus said that we are to be perfect 
as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And immediately we start rationalizing, well, we know we can't be perfect. Because only God is perfect. So we start adjusting the measure, the bar to which we should ascribe to lower it and lower it and lower it until it becomes something much more reasonable and manageable. If you can manage your own goodness, you have no need for God. He didn't call you to the measure of your goodness. He called you to His perfection. The only way you can get to that place is by absolute and complete dependence on Him. By crying out every day, God, help me today! By pressing in, by pressing, by pressing, by pressing. And this complacency is our isometric exercise, folks. It's something we have got to push back against. We've got to fight it. We have got to resist it. We've got to be active opposing it. We can't allow complacency to dictate our walk, our faith. God has blessed this country. We have much. Much. We have rooms full of stuff. Closets overflowing. And we clear them out so we can put new ones in. God has blessed, but in the back side of it, we have taken it and we have turned it to a curse. In Proverbs it says, I ask that you would give me neither too little nor too much. Because if you get too much, you'll become arrogant and say, look at what I have done. We have doctors that will prescribe you a pill for anything you need. We have books that will make you feel good about any situation you're in. We have talk shows that will just expose people as worse than you and make you feel better about yourself. We have doodads and gadgets and gizmos. We have stuff. We're lacking zeal. We're lacking calluses on our knees. We're lacking carpet burns on the backs of our arms as we lay out before God and we plead. <coughs> we have set the bar so low that we need to do nothing to attain it. God says, be perfect. He says, be holy. Peter writes that we are to be holy as he is holy. He's quoting the Old Testament. Multiple times in the Old Testament, God tells the people, you are to be holy because I am holy. You are to be holy as I am holy. This is not something we can attain of ourselves. So we reduce the measure to which we must strive. And we don't need God. We've eliminated the need for Him. Oh, we have Him. He's another one of our doodads. Our gadgets or our gizmos to be pulled down off the shelf to be examined and played with and used and put back up when we're done. God is calling out for a people who will accept nothing less than Him. He is calling out for a people who want more than anything Him. He is calling out for a people 
who will not compromise, who will not grow weary, who will not give up. I'm praying for revival. I'm praying that God would birth in me anew a zeal and a passion for him. And I'm praying that in you he lights a fire. Like the prophet says, a fire shut up in your bones that you cannot contain. That you would find yourself blurting out things of God, and in your mind be going, where did that come from? That when it comes time to worship God, you would rush to worship. That you would cast off anything that would impede in any way <coughs> you worship Him. Not because your things aren't great, but because God is greater. <clears throat> I want a fire to grow in this body. And I want to see it spread out to other believers. Because God is good. Not because Jesus Community Church is good. Not because we are good. But because the God we serve, the God that lives inside of us, is awesome. Because the God that lives inside of us is worth more than anything this world has to offer. Because God has called us. He has chosen us. And He has tasked us. He has called us to be His ambassador. How are they going to know unless the word goes out? Time to lay down the crap, folks. It's time to set aside everything that would encumber your relationship with God. It's time to get on our faces and we weep for the condition that this world is in, that this church is in, that God's people are in. That we grieve with those who grieve. <coughs> that we call out for more of Him. That we not be content genie in a bottle that we weigh up before God and ask Him to move with power for the changing of people's lives, for the saving of people's souls. That we reprioritize our thinking and our lives. That God would now and forever be first. Folks, he's called. And when he shows up, I want him to find us busy about his work and a people with whom he can be well pleased. I don't want to come home 
and find us sipping at his wine, and the house is in shambles. When he comes home, I want us to be at the door ready to greet him. Our candles lit. Everything in place and prepared for him. Fields are ripe unto harvest. But the labor's few. And people are going to hell. And we're more concerned about who said what on TV. We're more concerned about when the next episode of whatever it is we're watching will be on. more concerned with not missing the next great sale or the next great entertainment. If you would, just close your eyes. Father, we come to you right now, and God, we repent for those things that have drawn our attention away from you, those idols, God, that we have erected in our lives, that we give our loving attention and devotion to, our adoration. God, put a hunger in us for you. A thirst that will not be satisfied, that will not be quenched except by you. A longing, God, to know you more and more. To find our joy in you and in you alone. Father, show us those things that have bound us, that have fettered us, that have chained us. God, those things that have blinded our eyes and stopped up our ears and hardened our hearts. God, I ask that you would break them asunder, that you would shatter them. Help us, Father, to cast down any idols that we have in our lives. Set a fire, God, in my heart, my soul. Set us ablaze, God. That with one look, people would know that we are a holy temple in which the Almighty God dwells. Use us, Father. Make us usable for noble purposes. Help us, God, to be holy, to be thorough in our self-examination, and to lay aside anything, God, that would separate us from you, anything that would be profane. In 
God give us your heart. That we would love as you love. God, even those that would do us hurt. Even those who would insult us. Let our thinking be clear, Father. And our lives refreshed. And Father, let us not be content to stay where we are, but God desire to press in more. To want more of you. To know you more. Scripture says that if we confess our sins, he is just and able to forgive us our sins. And I want to share with you two things I want to confess to you. First, I have a bad temper that God has been working on me for years to overcome. And, and when I allow my temper to get the better of me, I'm not a very nice person. And so I want to confess to the church um, several times this week, I have not been very nice to my wife. And it's easy to come up with excuses. There's a lot going on. I'm stressed. There's a lot of things on my mind, but there's no excuse to treat her as anything less than a daughter of the Almighty. And I also confess, I have really, really been struggling with a, a man that has done some of my family members personal harm and I'm honest to God. I can't can't say I love him. And I'm asking God, please change my heart. Because I, don't, I know I am not supposed to feel this way to this man. But there are times I just want to beat him. And I don't want to love him. And I want to tell him the awful things that I think he is. So I lay before you today these areas of sin in my life. And I ask that you would pray for me. That God would strengthen me and give me victory in these areas. That I wouldn't be subject to the <coughs> sins of my fathers. The van note temper, all the men have it. God sets us free from those kind of curses. God delivers us from them. I don't have to be the van note temper 